Hi guys, well again. I'm always going on about Elite, but unless you're a gamer and one with 60 bucks to spare, you're probably wondering what the hell I'm babbling on about. Well, I've got a new video editor to play with, so maybe now would be a good time to talk about it. This isn't a game review. It's not going to be even close to a balanced opinion. I'm a huge fan and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I practically worship his most cardigan excellency, David Braben. He's a genius and I just love what he's done with this game. Now if you want to hear some fanny whining about what Elite isn't or how it doesn't do what those flashy big budget productions do, you're watching the wrong video. You'd be better off turning off now. <clears throat> it's a Marmite experience. Uh, it suits particular tastes and just like Marmite people tend to either love it or hate it. There's not much middle ground. Now reviewers describe it as a space sim or a MMO or even sometimes a space shooter but it's not. It's not any of those things. It's not a simulator although it does have a lot in common with some of the better flight sims. See the thing is it's pretty unlikely that we'll ever see tiny gunships blatting around the galaxy at tens or even hundreds of times the speed of line. The game isn't simulating anything, it's just a fantasy, it's complete escapism. Now there are realistic elements. You could build the space stations or something equivalent. You could build it tomorrow if you had the budget. But Frontier aren't slaved to the realistic elements. Whenever a gameplay decision had to be made, Frontier went with the one that felt like it was going to be the most fun. And I like that, I really like that. Now, there are a lot of people playing Elite now. There's over half a million of us, if you believe that. But you don't meet other players often enough to count this as an MMO. And there's a reason for that. I'll let Douglas Adams explain. See, Douglas said, space is big. Really big. You just wouldn't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the road to the chemists, but that's just peanuts to space. <laughs> yeah, I know. Even Jingles beat me to it, but fuck it, it's such a great quote. The game features a one-to-one -one scale model of the galaxy. Now look up at the night sky tonight. There's about oh, four and a half thousand stars visible to the naked eye under perfect viewing conditions. Now you can go to every single one of them in your little spaceship. In fact, you can visit every one of the 150,000 stars that are visible to terrestrial optical telescopes and they're all modelled as accurately as possible using the latest astronomical data. Now if that's still not enough for you, well procedural modelling fills in the gaps, adds the stars that we can't see in the galaxy. 400 billion of them. Now that's a pretty big playing area. And that means that it's not really a shooter either. Now, don't get me wrong, if you want to fight, there are places you can do it, so go fill your boots. But it's not necessarily what this game is about. You can just head off into the black, and you can explore the whole damn galaxy. You start off with a small ship, and enough credits to run it, while you try and figure out how to fly. Now the game has equipment that you can fit to your ride and various ways to earn the credits to buy it or to buy newer ships. That's it. There are no guilds, there are no character classes, there are no ranks, there are no tiers, there are no levels. There's nothing apart from your wits, your skill and your imagination to allow you to progress in this game. Now there's some that see that as a limitation but it's actually exactly the opposite. You're free to play this game any way you see fit. There's no story, there's no script, there's no cutscenes, there's absolutely nothing 
to break the sense of immersion that you feel. And after a while, it really does begin to feel that like you're the subject of your own space opera. And just like any space opera, one woman, one man, or one small furry creature from Alpha Centauri can make a difference. You can back major galactic power blocks, or you can back local factions limited to a single system. Your actions will help shape the fate of the entire human galaxy. Uh, or a tiny little part of it. Okay. That cheese wedge there is your starting ship. It's called a Sidewinder and uh, it's uh, shite, really. It's slow, it's poorly armed and it's very easy to kill. It's short ranged and it doesn't carry much cargo. Now luckily enough you start off in a fairly safe part of human space. How you control the ship is entirely up to yourself. Frontier themselves use SATEC X-52s, um, which is a HOTAS setup. But you can go from keyboard and mouse all the way up to top flight, uh, top spec flight simulation kit. And there's plenty of support for most options, and even if there isn't, every key and control is customizable. Uh, you can just map and bind them to the way you want, and you can do it inside the game menus. Uh, the ships themselves, they move like warbirds do in flight sounds, with some pretty cool additional moves, some additional thrusters. Uh, it's a lot like the human fighters that you see in Battlestar Galactica. Get back to the Sidewinder. I'm actually on my third Sidewinder now. I lost my first one, utterly, in a freak docking accident way back in Beta. Um, I was using a Thrustmaster X joystick at the time, and that's got a rather sensitive throttle slide. Uh, I was landing on one of the pads that are closest to the entrance on one of the big orbitals. I over it, and... Um, <laughs> well, I think I know what a roulette ball feels like now. Scratch one, that Sidewinder. Um, I ran out of fuel, and kind of. Uh, a bit later in the game. I ended up out of gas, out of air, and out of ideas, in an uninhabited binary system and it was surrounded by nothing apart from equally barren wastes within my ship's remaining jump range. You know, it was just like, oh game over man! Now things have changed. Uh, now that the game's up and running, there are actually players who come out and bring you fuel these days. And it's all off their own backs, it's nothing to do with Frontier, they haven't jacked this up. I think that says it all about the elite player base, really. You know, we've even got our own volunteer rescue service. I'm not going to lie to you, though. Uh, when the game went live, I hot-footed it straight across to my new ship, and I dropped my third Sidewinder a wee bit. Like it was a hot brick. Now, one of the bonuses of being an early backer at least with the package that I bought into, was getting a shiny new fighter stored in the home systems. And whereas that Sidewinder is so ugly, you'd have to wrap it in bacon just to get your dog to bite it, the Eagle, the fighter that we were given, is just, ah, uh, it's sleek, it's sexy, it's fast, it's well armed, it's amazingly agile. It's one of the best, one of the most fun ships in the game. And I'm afraid the poor wee Sidewinder just didn't get a look in. Which is a shame. A real shame. A lick of fresh paint helps. Now, you can upgrade everything on the ship, so it's not quite as shiny as I'm making it out to be. And don't forget, it's a training ship. It's so weak that you have to be pretty competent to succeed at any of the game's roles using one of these. Uh, that's the whole point. Now, personally, I think that's a good thing. You know, they're getting you to drive a Ford for a while before they let you loose on a Ferrari. Now that last bit of footage was a wee bit, taking down an Eagle and chasing off a Cobra. They're both much more powerful ships, they're bigger, they're faster, and much more heavily armed. But this is a game of skill. If you can keep out of the other guy's guns, 
that keep on hitting him with yours, then you're going to win, no matter how much better his ship is. Uh, of course, those, those were AI noobs. Anytime you're looking at your scanner, anytime you're looking at your messages coming in, keep an eye out for any contact that's got the letters CMDR next to their name. Those are human pilots, commanders, and the chances are that they're pretty good by now, especially if they're in an unusual or a powerful ship. Try not to get into a fight with them, and especially try not to get into a fight with them if your ship is anywhere close to stock. Okay, here's me winding up uh, my Ferdinand's, I think, with some basic manoeuvres. Now pitch and roll are your strongest axes. Yaw is much weaker. You can strafe up, down, left and right, and you can even reverse thrust. Um, I haven't actually shown it, but there's also a flight assist routine damping down your ship's movement. It makes it easier to, to fly the thing. You can disable it, and the ship will fly in a much more Newtonian manner. There's advantages to doing it, um, but it does make it tricky to fly. Now notice how it's possible to keep the nose of your ship on the target, even when you're moving in another direction. You want to practice that. It's a terrific advantage to be able to hit the other guy without being hit. Now if your weapons are pointed at him, but his nose is pointing away from you, it's going to make it a lot harder for him to hit back, particularly, and I'm talking about players here, uh, if he's got fixed weapons, he needs to point the ship at you. Okay, here's another thing. Uh, you see how deploying the cargo hatch brings up a secondary screen? If you keep the canister, that's cargo, inside the crosshairs, you can scoop it up. Well, you will if you keep your speed below 40 metres a second. The um, thing is, that's classed as salvage and that's illegal in most systems. And you can be fined if a ship passes by you, um, scans you and finds illicit goods in your cargo hold. Now you don't have to pay those fines. Nobody's going to make you pay them. But if you get enough defaulted fines on you in any particular system, you're going to get labelled a criminal. And once you're labelled a criminal, there's a bounty on your head, and there's no consequences against anybody, players or AIs, who shoot at you. Uh, for that reason, I try to clear my fines straight away. But some players like to build them as high as possible. It's to their own. Um, every game, every computer game's got a grind. And in this game, it's got three aspects. You need credits to improve your ship or to buy a new one. So you have to grind credits. Combat, exploration, trade, they'll all earn credits. Um, likewise there's a rating system that runs. Now it doesn't it runs all the way from harmless to elite. And it does affect the kind of missions that are available to you in various menus. Uh, which is which is nice, but the journey to Elite is what most Elite players are on, and the title's worth a lot, even if there was no bonuses at all for it. Um, the, more you, the more you play, the better you get, the better your performance, the higher you'll be ranked. Now the final thing is, you can improve your standing with the three main power blocks, um, and that unlocks various advantages, bonuses, and in two factions it even unlocks uh, player controlled ships, which is nice. Now how you do all of this is entirely up to yourself. You can carry out acts of piracy, you can become a bounty hunter, you can trade, you can explore, um, you can go mining, you can go smuggling, you can carry out salvage runs, courier runs, basically whatever takes your fancy. Now there are paid missions on that bulletin board. Um, you can sell your explorative data in Universal Cartographics. You can cash in bounties and you can even shift black market goods in contacts, although not every space station has got a black market. Watch out for that one. Or you can just sell cargo and mine doors in the commodities market. While you're doing all that, 
you can reinforce or you can undermine the major powers, various figureheads. Uh, you can also boost the standing of local factions, or you can even head over to the forums and you can join like-minded real-life players in achieving player set goals of your own. There's all sorts on there, from cannonball runs, races, um, to deep space exploration missions. It's <laughs> quite scary. Uh, it's quite scary the way we're so geeky. There are community goals as well that are tied into the ongoing game narrative. Uh, they usually involve lots of different um, opportunities. Um, recent highlights include things like building a new orbital. Remember that one? You could uh, you would get bonuses for delivering material. But uh, there was also all sorts of different opportunities for taking out pirates that were interdicting the supplies or taking out opposing uh, missions or taking on opposing missions which allowed you to back the pirates. And there was nothing to stop you just joining the fun as a, an independent bounty hunter or an independent pirate. Um, because there was a lot of players involved, there was a lot of opportunities for player on player interaction. Um, that's a real test of your skills. Definitely worth trying. And the thing is, I've barely scratched the surface. Now if you're interested in hearing more about this, uh, please let me know. All comments, good or bad, are welcome below. And before you start, yeah, I know I'm a massive geek. That's not news. And if you've got any questions, any questions at all about it, fire away. Um, if I don't know the answer, I'll probably know somebody who does and I'll try and get back to it. Anyway, later guys. Thanks for listening.